Hello, this is a new episode of, what's our podcast name again? Uh, Weekly Shonen Sunday. Weekly Shonen Sunday. <laughs> Weekly Shonen Sunday, I like that one. We're going to stick with that one, hopefully. This is Weekly Shonen Sunday, the number one podcast for Shonen manga. Not just Shonen Jump, we are branching out, so yeah. you can't really tell from this episode. <laughs> not even Jump, not even Jump in general. It's a specialized yeah. episode. Yeah, and so um, this is going to be... a uh, Two parter. So the first part is our bleach catch up with yep. the uh, Soul Society Human World arc, it's and then the second is just like, arc. yeah, it is a uh, is a catch up on certain series that we just want to highlight that we feel like got really big chapters recently. Uh, so let's go off with the introductions. My name is Real Human Bean. You know who I am, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> you know. My name. My name is Sloppy Joe. You guys can catch me on Twitter now. Uh, link in the description uh, in, and my anime list. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just shamelessly shilling. <laughs> All right. Oh, my name we're is doing Arda. a podcast. There's no such thing as shameless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Orda. I'm I'm somewhat of a big deal now. You might know me from uh, a mutual friend, an acquaintance, so to speak, of Mr. Goatee now on Twitter. Shout out yeah. if you're listening. Arda, are you like scratching glass or something? <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, okay, you're fine now. Were you like okay. fiddling with like your anime figures or something? <laughs> no, <laughs> that was a paper plate. That was a paper plate. It was so loud. <laughs> yeah, whatever, keep it in. <laughs> yeah, alright. That oh. saves, saves editing for me, so I don't care. Okay, yeah. so we actually have a new guest ooh, today. Ooh, 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 Drum roll, please. Alright. Spit, spit it out. Howdy, y'all. My name's Colin. Um, I'm not that special, but I'm so, hopefully here for the long run. Uh, yeah. I'll be calling out to you guys sometime soon. Yo, so. Wow, yo, that was yo. that was stay tuned smooth for some app. new fucking new content. Maybe I'll be make a YouTube channel or a Twitch. Who knows? Not me. All Try right, we're all gonna make shitty YouTube videos eventually. Well, I've beat you there by a long shot. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, but, okay, wait, we need to address the elephant in the room. I know we did this last episode, but I need to keep doing it because it keeps happening. Stop commenting, uh oh, stinky, please. Uh, you're gonna do it, say they're gonna keep doing a lot, it. A, a lot of people on YouTube, you're commenting, uh oh, stinky. Oh, because one guy did it. That doesn't give you the right to keep commenting, uh oh, stinky. Okay? Okay, good, okay. So, uh, before we but you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. Let's just let it all out right now. Let it all out right now and never stinky. have to do it again. <laughs> stinky poopy. <laughs> funny, funny poopy. Funny poop. Uh, funny. Uh, 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 I'm done. But before we start yeah. Bleach, I want to ask Colin something. Colin, since you weren't here for uh -oh. the last episode of Bleach, I want to ask you, what are your thoughts on the first three volumes of Bleach? Which is up to, um, I think, the mother Ichigo's like mom or Ichigo's backstory. Ichigo's I'm just backstory. yeah. Okay, yeah. so honestly, I'm really excited. Um, probably my, my favorite character so far is definitely Chad. Um, mm -hmm. like as a whole, I think Chad is just beautiful, Mwah. perfection. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just really excited to see where the series goes. Uh, didn't. Sorry, teacher, didn't take notes today, but I have notes mm -hmm. for the the next volumes we're talking good. about today. So, so let's just jump right into that. Uh, so I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but my mem if my memory serves, like the first kind of arc we get after that reading is Don Kanonji, the yeah. uh, TV star. Yeah, we had a little yeah. con chapter right yeah. before that. That con chapter was great. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. When yeah, con yeah, like ran away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was like I was honestly like the perfect chapter to like come back to after finishing the um the three volumes and like after going through Ichigo's backstory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I I actually really liked the um the TV like kind of medium guy. I think I I read a few comments online that like it's people kind of say it feels like filler, but I I completely Ow. disagree. Oh, it's a, it's a fun art. So yeah, fun. I don't think it's filler in the slightest. Um, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. I think not. he's a strong character too, because <clears throat> yeah. even though he's Eric, clearly able to see spirits, Eric. he's very ignorant to his actions, but he believes he's trying to help people. Yeah, That's yeah, Eric, that was that was what really. <laughs> yeah, that was what really like set it apart, because like, I thought he was just going to be kind of like you know like a buggy the clown or like a uh, a Mister Satan type character. 
But yeah. what really separated him, I, I feel like, is when he reveals to Ichigo, like, how he, like, firmly, like, he, he's like, he's all these kids look up to me, and, yeah. yeah, and he's like, I really want to, like, leave a good impression. Yeah, don't don't worry about me, one. like, making gaping wounds in all these hollows or whatever. Don't, don't worry about that. Just forget, forget. Yeah, yeah that was, room. that really threw me off that he could actually see the spirits. Yeah, that was, that, that was, was interesting. Really cool. <clears throat> But yeah, like, the whole thing is he thinks he's helping them by just, like, shoving his pole into their gaping holes. Think, but it's actually creating hollows, which is a big no-no. But I mean, the guy couldn't know that, you know? Yeah. Another interesting part of the arc was uh, Kisuke, Hat Mr. Hat and Claws. I really like how mysterious he seems in that chapter, because he really just seems to show up out of nowhere. Yeah. But he's yeah. obviously, like, observing, like, for the long run. He's really interesting in that way. Um, one of the details I loved during the fight was Ichigo can't swing his sword indoors because it's a big stupid sword. Yeah, it's like, big, yeah. yeah, that was great. I love that. And it gets stuck in the ceiling and he's like, huh, I guess I didn't think about that. Um, actually, another note I have down here is um, uh, Kananji. He reminds me a lot of Hercule. He's yeah. yeah. Like Hercule. Well, I, I, said, I, I said that Oh, earlier, you did? Oh, yeah. my bad. Yeah. No, it's all good. Both so, are really goofy ass characters, um, both like pure of heart and I don't think we I have think any other place to talk about them later on, but like Ichigo's classmates, I have it written down. Don't really care. They're still, the, um, they still the suck. <laughs> Kigo and yeah. Misurio, yeah. I have it written down here. And his and the female, like the weird lesbian classmate. Oh, yeah, she's terrible. Oh, yeah, she's I hate annoying. her. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, you're being homophobic, bro. You can't say that, bro. <laughs> okay. She's just annoying, man. Like. <laughs> okay, so I think. Uh, <laughs> I think that was about as good as time as any to get into like the actual big shit though. The <laughs> the fucking big ass like everyone's awakening arc. Damn. Yeah. yeah. The Quincy arc. Damn. That oh yeah. Oh yeah. We should talk about Quincy. Here. First of all. It yeah, yeah. I was I was about to say it's so interesting the concept of the Quincy because. We talked about before with Bleach, like, that the kind of world building they do with all this Soul Society stuff is so interesting, and it's it's cool to see the Quincy's as, like, a splinter faction of that, yeah. you know? Yeah. And they have their own history, they have their reason for, like, kind of causing this schism between them and, like, the Soul Society Reapers. I, I love the, um, the contrast between, uh, Ishida and, and Ichigo, and, like, just the contrast between the Soul Reapers and the Quincy's in general. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of like the classic, you know, like Dante versus Virgil type of yeah. rivalry. Like yeah. that, like their like their outfits are like the exact opposite of each other's, and um, mm -hmm. their personalities really clash. I, I love yeah. When, you uh, know, I Ishigo uh, uses a melee weapon, and then Ishida uses a ranged weapon. I love, I love how like um, yeah, when he shoots it. I love, I love how like Ishida it bleeds and stuff. Yeah. So. I love when Ishida's like telling his backstory and then Ichigo just tells him like your story's too long, I stopped paying attention. Yeah. And, and then Ichigo does the same thing. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was really cool. And though. then also Like um oh, go on. That was really cool though, like when Ichigo was like telling his like motivation to one to to Ishida and he just said uh I'm I'm not Superman. I can't, I can't save, save the world, but I'm gonna try to like save as many people as I can, and I really like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that too. But um, there was at the end of one of the volumes, you know, we get the little character details, and I was I pogged the fuck out <laughs> because I I like to listen to music when I'm reading manga, and yeah, yeah. one of my top like five favorite albums is Kid A by Radiohead. And so I'm listening to that, I'm reading this volume, and then I get to the end of that volume and it says Ishida theme song Idiotech by Radiohead from Kid A. And I was like, so OMG, that's literally me. Just pogging. Like, like Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> pointing at the TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, good it, it, I, I love the way that, you know, the songs are kind of chosen for these characters and I think they reflect yeah. them very well. It's like Kid A is like a very, you know, high IQ sophisticated album and it makes sense that a character like Ishida would would like that there's a really it's big nice thing of like Shonen like Jump series and just having a lot of like western music implemented in mm -hmm. them and I find that Rocky. pretty fascinating I know Rocky yeah. was like the big one to do it we will, we will get Rocky's to the Jojo the episode eventually I promise it'll be done it's, it is when coming. it's done it's done <laughs> 
Um, okay, John Carmack. No, I am I am being a Link Linkara, the great Linkara. Oh, I am the light bringer. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow, that really shows the divide between us right there. Those two <laughs> completely fucking different people. Channel, uh, uh, manga cast episode four coming to Channel Awesome in 2020. Oh god, no! Can you imagine if like Channel Awesome were the ones that made Doom, and then like its <laughs> software were the ones that made Channel Awesome? Dude, imagine just nostalgia critic voicing the demons like. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Imagine like Mick Gordon doing a remix of that. Dude, imagine, dude, imagine if like the like the fucking <laughs> intro cutscene for Doom Eternal was just the nostalgia critic intro with Doom Guy. <laughs> oh no! Wait, you know what? I mean, Mick Gordon's not doing anything right yeah. now. We could probably commission him to do a cover of that theme song. <laughs> No, bro, it'll take too long. He'd freaking put it on hiatus or whatever, and then blame yeah. people. <laughs> oh no my offense, god, Mr. Mick. I yeah, know you're listening. Mick, I know you're Mick, listening. If you're, if you're listening to this, I am so sorry, Mick. I, yeah. Killer Instinct is your best soundtrack. Yeah. I love it. Mick love Gordon, I, I know, so Mick Gordon, I know you're a big fan of Bleach. I know you're a big fan of Real Human Being. You're watching this video right now. Yeah, we saw your little. Uh, you stuck a little reference to him in the Doom Eternal soundtrack. So, uh, yeah, we saw you. We saw you comment. Oh, oh stinky on the last podcast. Oh my god. Yeah, we totally downvoted it too. So sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're downvoting your comments, guys. So please stop. Mick, Mick Gordon is like incognito on YouTube, and he just watches stupid fucking monkey videos. Yeah. I mean, oh monkey god. videos are a guilty pleasure. You just, it's a rabbit hole, man. It's such a rabbit hole. Because, like, the thing with, like, monkeys and apes that's so captivating is, like, they're just smart enough, but then they're also yeah. so stupid. Okay, I know this is like like the exact opposite of what we're talking about with Bleach, but like I need to like get this out of my system. Eric, do you know about the fucking like baby monkey torture rabbit hole on YouTube? Oh what? yeah. <laughs> so there's a whole entire playlist, and like it's just whole. There's multiple playlists, videos, but like if you. But there's like, yeah. multiple playlists. I thought there was just one. There's just tons so of playlists, like, playlists of, like, just videos. Just videos of baby monkeys playing around and being cute and whatever. And if you, like, look at the comments, it's just people saying, like, I want to rip the head off that fucking... I want him to fa fucking I wanna bash him against the rods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it makes me happy when he screams in pain. Like, a, yeah. few, a, few, a few weeks ago, we went on a rabbit hole binge. We keep going on these rabbit holes at, like... Wait, are they, are they all by the same person? No. No. <laughs> No, this is like the an entire community that like different people in the comments are too. It, it's not even a recent thing either. Like if you scroll down enough, you'll see comments from like six, seven years ago of of people saying like, you should have you should have fucking poisoned that, that rodent with cyanide. If I was there, I would have fucking kicked him into Jesus the atmosphere. Christ. Also, um, what the speak fuck? Speaking of YouTube, um, I've been getting ads for like a Bleach mobile game that's literally about like the exact arcs we're about to talk about today. Well, yeah, really, is it that getting a Bleach ad? Game? Yeah, the ble I is it official? Your phone's listening. I, I I don't know if it's official or not, but like I remember we, I remember seeing like the big ass hollow. I remember seeing like we'll, we'll we'll get into it later, but like with the thing between like Ruika and like the Soul Side and all that shit. I'm like, yeah. I knew about this from a shitty game ad. <laughs> I know there's Brave Souls, which is I think that's the only one on the App Store. There might be another one, but there's like this one I, I like, think get. it's Brave. Is it's it like, like um? I get with like their tits are jiggling and all that. It's like weird. I think it might be Brave Souls because I remember in the commercial like at one point right? that. No. Okay, you know what? Oh, I'm that's not it. That's not it. My phone. Okay, my phone. I know you're listening to me. I'm opening up YouTube right now. I'm going into the going into the trending tab. Show me the the advertisement I keep getting. Okay, Lady Gaga rain on me. Hey Google, okay, I didn't get it. Give me I a didn't get it right now. It's because they they know that you're on to them now. I don't care. It's, I don't want to see the fucking advertisement. It's like how Bill Gates is fucking injecting uh, nano machines into vaccines so that they can track you. But you know what? I say, fuck it. Give me all the fucking tracking tools because I just want I, I I want like a fucking FBI agent to just be like seething over the shit that I like post and say online what was that and, like, uh i i hope i my dream is that i mind break an fbi agent into like joining my antics <laughs> what was that um, <laughs> what did he say in that like silver mania gabe newell interview he was like oh uh, the waves will Part protect you from the 
The harp transmitter. The harp transmitter, <laughs> yeah. Dude, okay, so I was curious how that was, so I looked up harp transmitter, and then, like, the first result on Google was, like, harp transmitter 5G coronavirus <laughs> chemtrail, or, like, yo, something yo, like that. Like, what? Actually, ahead that's of such time. A, that's such, like, an Maybe, Alex yeah. Jones title. These fries yeah, are the harp terrible. Transmitter. Here, let me, let me see. Harp transmitter. Yeah, it's apparently like a real thing. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. harp transmitter, 5G chemtrails. That's the first thing that comes I, up. I thought he was just talking about the, um, the, the Meet the Medic or like Meet the Heavy, whichever video it was. Like the Team Fortress 2 video. That's Meet oh, the I medic. found it. Someone, someone is selling a uh, book on Amazon that says Death by 5G Towers, Conspiracy to End Mankind, Chemtrails, and Harp. Is that what, is that what we're going to do an episode on? <laughs> um, yeah, little reading session. Um, I know we're going on this tangent, but I wanted to point out that, like, you know that conspiracy that like everyone is watched by an FBI agent, right? Yeah. yeah. But wouldn't wouldn't that mean like so the population of of America is like what like three hundred seventy million people? FBI agents so have, then, like, like, have like six monitors each. They have like yeah. a gaming rig. No, 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 no. Imagine if like there's an individual FBI agent for every person, yeah. so, and they all just like they all live like underground. Yeah. So, like, would you say like half of America's population is uh, FBI agents, or are you saying Whoa. like America's population is doubled because of the FBI? No, FBI yeah, agents? I'm saying I'm saying they're doubled. No, what yeah. they do is they send into your house in a little room, and they have a little straw that goes up through the ground for air, and they suck on that straw to like breathe every once in a while, it's just to Dude, pee down uh, the straw. So so they'll stop the no, I like to imagine that uh, the FBI agents have like six monitors and they have like a total gaming rig. <laughs> they have they have light up keyboards <laughs> and shit. They have light up keyboards. They have <laughs> they razor got... like like a laser <laughs> keyboard, laser mouse. They still what you rig, bro. Uh, FBI agent, if you're listening to this, uh, can you please confirm if this is true or not? <laughs> uh, se send me not... send me an Amber Alert on my phone, and that'll <laughs> that'll be our way of knowing. Watch like got. Watch like 20 minutes into the podcast, you get like a fucking Amber Alert on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, oh fuck. Oh fuck. Uh, yeah, so anyways, back to Bleach. Uh, we were talking about the Quincy's. Um, yeah, everyone got yeah. an awakening and we got to see their powers and they were yeah. all- Chad! Really like, so Chad! Yeah, Chad, when he fucking Ch punches that dude, that was great. Legit. Uh, I think Chad had the coolest power up, yeah, honestly. Definitely. I think Orihime. It's Orihime so simple, but it's beauty. It's beauty and simplicity. Orihime is, is interesting. Um, it's she's really more of like defensive based. Yeah. yeah so there's a lot of like I, she can heal. To it. So what she does is mm -hmm. she can protect with a shield. It's it's basically all shields. One shield yeah, protects. On one shield heals, and the other can like cut. And that's really yeah. That was really cool because it, it's like. Like this other this fairy can like create a shield inside of something to and like rip split it open. Awesome. Yeah, and, uh, that was awesome. I don't There's... remember like I, I didn't like write down the uh, like exact page and whatever, but like I know there was a scene in that Orihime fight where the Hollow just <laughs> just tried to get the zombies to rape Orihime, and I was like, whoa! whoa oh, so really? speaking about that, um, the, the entire fight, um, I fucking love Final Fantasy VI. Um, uh, Tatsuki fighting the Octopus Hollow literally just reminded me of um the one scene in Final Fantasy VI where Sabin's fighting um. Orthros, uh, the octopus, mm -hmm. and the octopus was like, I fucking hate meatheads, get the hell out of here. And literally, the octopus did the exact same thing with her. And I was like, wow. Yeah. I, thought, that's um, interesting. I thought Tatsuki was going to do a lot more. I honestly thought she was going to be like a mainstay yeah. fighter or something, but it seems like honestly, she's going to be. I would have loved you know, I feel like she's yeah. going to push to the sidelines, which I'm. Yeah, I can. I, 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 I am kind of starting to join the Oriyime train. Yeah. Oh. And Colin, who's best girl? Uh, or he may, sorry. Yeah! Oh! I won. <laughs> Lonely Rukia. I won. Little Rukia I'm goblin. Still, Ruk I'm Rukia. sorry, but the no. leak spin. The leak spin's all yeah. over. Yeah. You're outmatched, Le Clayton. I will say Dude, this. Yeah, leak spin is, is now, eternal. is now my second favorite because now I think she got the best development of these past few, like... Oh, absolutely. absolutely, fucking lutely We'll get to that later. But, um, one thing I like to- I want to say about Ichio and, um, Ishida is... I love, like, they have this stupid bet, and it's like, okay, we're gonna summon all these, uh, hollows, and whoever can kill the most wins. And I love how even though, like, Ishida's supposed to be this, like, egghead, he also, like, you know, kind of suffers from that, like, bout of stupidity yeah. that, like, Ich- Ichigo probably, like, brought out of him, and eventually yeah. he's like, oh shit, this was a terrible idea, and it's like, yeah, it was. He's okay. a bad influence. But, yeah. 
Yeah. I like that kind of relationship on the two of them. Yeah. Okay, we're back. Yeah. yeah. Sorry also, about that, like, guys. Click in that, that entire arc... Uh... Alright, so where were we at? Okay, so... <laughs> was Ichigo just at his, like, default base power level at oh, all times? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the background, uh, you, you or are we mean, talking about yeah. the actual fight? I think that's pretty much straight up said by um, Katsuki or whatever. He's, like, beating the shit out of everyone, and then they were like, no, he's not even using his magic power. He's just, he's just that strong at base level. Well, but no, no, no. Wasn't wasn't that like Rukia's power? It was Rukia's power. I'm pretty sure before yeah. we get to like, oh. the next part. Yeah, because the whole the whole thing is like after Rukia's taken know, into she, the like, Soul she Society, got, she, yeah, she um, Ichigo now. needs to strengthen like, his own power because he level. doesn't have that power anymore. Also, um, talking about this arc, I think uh, I how they described how Quincy's and uh, Soul Reapers I, like formed their weapons but, uh, was really interesting. Yeah, so it's like, really yeah. Cool, like one cool used like an actual the weapon as like a conductor, while the other um, one just uses like um, the midichlorian the final fight in the air and just makes a weapon out of it. Pretty much, yeah. Wait, yeah. Movie, like, I love like, like when Minishida is just firing drinking. away with his fucking like magic bow, and it starts like tearing apart at his fingers. Oh yeah, I thought that was like a really or like when uh, he should wear gloves. <laughs> they did like a they made him into like a mounted turret yeah, where he was one. just uh, like grabbing yeah. onto Ichigo's sword. No, like his that was so Ichigo's cool. sword was like literally yeah. taped to his I like, head. I was like, I like okay, how they're, like, yeah, actually do something <laughs> really fucking. Guys I thought he was gonna like launch Ichigo's them. sword. I was just like, that's gonna be really stupid, but I really hope it works. And they didn't even do that. And I was like, God, no, damn it's just it. a power conductor. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that, I, again, just like the distinction between the Quincy's and the Reapers is great, and that just makes me more excited for Burn the Witch, because I I love seeing yeah, these different weird. perspectives on back. like the same kind of concepts, you know, of just like yeah. delivering punishment to Hollows. Yeah, I I know literally nothing about Burn the Witch. I'm trying to you yeah, know we'll obviously that, save especially. that for the end of all this. Yeah, and then we started talking a bit about like Tatsuki and how like she's kind of like. I don't know, I have no idea what they're planning with her because everyone else is just kind of mogging her right now, TB. I know, she, like, she got, she has, she can see spirits now. It's weird. Like, what's the point? Uh, I was, I was hoping she'd be like a Tifa Lockhart sort yeah, of Yeah, that's like, what it fighter, seemed like, because but... she is like a martial artist. And I guess Chad took that or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. But, uh, it was, we got a lot of really cool, like, visuals and stuff during the fights. Mm -hmm. With all of them. Um... The final fight of this arc, especially, <laughs> wait, the reveal of like this giant hollow. Oh, uh, you know breaking. what? I don't, I don't know what everyone else thinks of this. I kind of really didn't like that fight. Really? I. It's just it was the. You're talking about the Menace Grande, right? Yeah, the giant one. Yeah, I don't know. That was just. It was so fast. I felt like. It was like. Yeah, I like. <laughs> I like how they're like. Oh, even the big guys have trouble taking this guy out. Or yeah, and then Ichigo just does it, like, no problem. And, I mean, like, okay, at the time, I really didn't like it, but after everything else that happened, I kind of have a new perspective on it, because it's like, I was just thinking, like, man, this is too easy for Ichigo, this is, like, kind of dumb. But then, you know, like, pretty much right after that, he loses that power. Yeah, it was and, weird. And so, like... It's probably gonna come back. Well, no, I don't think I don't think he needs it anymore, because he started training his own uh, spirit energy, remember? Yeah, but, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah so we'll I, I'm 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 thinking that like retroactively, I'm 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 kind of more accepting to the Menos Grande fight because to compare it to something else, it reminds me of like pretty much every single Metroid game starts like with you having like every upgrade, and then like your ship crashes or something, and then you like lose it instantly. Yeah, so I, it might be like a situation like that. Like, yeah. So so that's that's making me kind of. But at the time, it was like this huge revelation. Oh no, it's the Menos Grande, and then it just kind of like ends really fast. And I don't know, yeah, it just I can see that. didn't have as I much. I mean, it was, was good like character one development shot at, on basically. A, or you Ishida's part. It was really good on his like character part, I guess, having to actually team up with Ichigo. Yeah, that's true. You know, despite their differences. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I really liked Ishida's character a lot. I liked, I loved his backstory with his uh, trainer, and like. Oh yeah, that was depressing. Yeah. Honestly. yeah. And like why he doesn't trust the Reapers and all that, and then his like, his like fucking like gauntlet or whatever that he gets is cool as fuck. God, I love how he like if he uses his bow too much, it actually has like a physical strain on his body. Yeah, and that's I found such that a cool really like cool. detail. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but 
I'm not sure if um, the Zanpak what is it Zanpakuro? Yeah, Zanpakuto. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if those like do the same thing to their With, user. No, they don't. We'll get to the. I have a little section I want to talk about the okay. Zanpakuto though. Because like I was gonna say, it probably has to relate with like how the weapons are made, with, like the mm -hmm. Quincy's, and because like, I mean, it might wear down like uh, Soul Reaper's like hands, I guess, if like they're using a sword repeatedly and they don't. Well, don't the know, bow is pure energy. Something. That's the thing. Too. Well, that's the thing. That's that's what I was gonna say too. Like the bow is literally just made out of the energy, like you said, Clayton. So. So it probably probably sting a little bit. Mm -hmm. So. A little bit, but uh, just a little. Yeah, that arc happened. Um, then we go into our next little bit with uh, we introduced to Renji and Byakuya. Yeah, Byakuya, which is uh, the name of a very important character, Doctor Stone. Mm -hmm. We'll get to it. We we'll get to it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were introduced to that Re Renji and ba Byakuya. That was a fucking like whirlwind. Yeah, I that wasn't expecting that. Yeah, that that was crazy to have that like follow up the Menace Grande. Yeah. Like, like every every monster just gotta have the other one be the the protagonist that needs like the strongest person. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But like this actually just helped your Yeah, and and again, like coming right after the Menace Grande where we saw Ichigo do something like stupid OP. It it, it, it like kind of resets the stakes, and you're like, wait, oh shit! It it really makes like a whiplash, but I think like in a in a really good way. You know, what, actually, yeah, like discussing this more, I'm starting to kind of appreciate the Menace Grande fight more. So that the, you know, big plus um, for Bleach. Menace Grande is about 50 chapters into the series, and the, compared to a lot of other shonen series, a lot can happen in that time frame. Yeah. Look at like Demon Slayer. By the time we're at right now in the manga, Demon Slayer, we got past the train arc. Oh my god! And some major was, like, I thought, huh. really? And I think the Stone War in Stone Wars, I believe Stone Wars was around the seventy mark for Doctor Stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of major yeah. story arcs seem to unfold around this era. Yeah. And Bleach's turning point right now is what's coming out of this. It kind of just makes Ichigo's triumph for Minos Grande just feel like a fluke, honestly. Or, or just like, like his that like, uh, half of the prologue. <laughs> Yeah. Half of the prologue. Was I don't think it's up to Arlong, because I feel like it's at see. least up to Barite at like the end. Because uh, chapter one hundred's low I'm down, checking. So. Arlong Park was chapter sixty nine. Yo. <laughs> Yo, don't say it. Don't say it. Please, please. There, we're we're a family friendly podcast. Are we? You know, I've got I've gone twenty six minutes without saying that word. No, that's that's, a word. <laughs> oh, that's nice, dude. Yeah, oh, keep, fuck. Keep God damn it. No, no. Yeah, it was Barate. I was right. Yeah. But, um. Chapter. Anyways, back on the. Topic. But yeah, um. Yeah. Byakuya. Yeah. yeah, and then you get the revelation of who Byakuya is Rukio's brother. Why? I was spoiled by a shitty mobile game. I think <laughs> the coolest thing. The coolest thing to come out of this little. <laughs> the little skirmish is the fact now that we know Zanpakuto have names yeah. and special yeah. abilities mm -hmm. derived from that's awesome that is really cool, sword is cool. oh my god yeah it's, I, it's like the cane sword from Dark uh, it's the IV cane from, from you know yeah, yeah. the concept of the Zanpakuto reminds me a lot of Soul Leader yeah just cause you can tell that Soul Leader just yeah chance. absolutely but I mean, Soul Eater really made it its own with its style. I felt like. Yeah. Soul Eater podcast coming soon. Maybe. Yo, we had Ichigo's like fucking bleeding on the ground, like dying. And then, um. He's gay. So I walked up to him and he says, uh. Don't use other people as an excuse to go kill yourself. I love that. Story. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the training? Or yeah. oh yeah yeah okay so when when the training started I was like rolling my eyes and I was like oh god a training arc here we go and yeah we uh, we do get I think like a kind of BS like really kind of I don't know on the nose like anime training thing where it's like you know Ichigo has to um, 
has to spar against this little girl that's like way more powerful than him and then yeah and and then he like gets his ass handed to him and then Kisuke is like oh you passed and it's like okay but then well I mean he didn't really get his ass handed well it was more of just like he, he was constantly running away and he's like wait a minute I can just punch her and then nearly punches a small girl <laughs> the f- what, what the fuck bro you can't do that can't do that in a shonen, in a shonen, shonen manga. but then but then after that the next like kind of training thing i thought was like really fucking cool and like actually kind of like um kind of really tense when kisuke like separates ichigo's chain and then just fucking throws him in the pit i was like oh fuck that yeah, was that awesome was, that was cool yeah. as fuck and uh like the design on those chains was really cool mm-hmm. Yeah, and they have like oh, the kind of like biting at yeah, they're biting at him. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. There's the whole like concept of yeah, and then actually, I wanted to talk about the awakening. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I thought it was so when he was like on the building and all that shit, and then you see like the guy with like um, like was he even wearing like a bl- no? That was that was the sword. I, I think. Oh, uh, are you talking about Zangetsu? Yeah, Zangetsu. Yeah, that was... Yeah, Zangetsu was his Zanpakuto. Yeah, I just felt like that entire... That entire scene, um... First... Kingdom... It reminded me of Kingdom Hearts 3, only because, like... But you go into the soul realm... <laughs> yeah, but better, because, like... It's like, alright, find the one box. Kingdom Hearts 3 was like, alright, collect all the fucking Soras. Make yourself whole. Find find who you really are. And it's just like... Shut this did it a hell of a lot better. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was really cool. It was like, oh wait, I can sense spirit energy, and guess what? Yeah. Soul Reaver energy is red. Haha. <laughs> I, I I loved Zangetsu's design. It reminded me a lot of um, Vincent, the villain from the Cowboy Bebop movie. Just the yeah. really. Also like... reminded me of a. Uh, Aizawa. Yeah, from, from my, my hero. hero. I like I just like hobo looking dudes who just end up look, being like the biggest. Yeah, badass. I mean Alkiji from One Piece. Basically that too. Yeah. Hobo badasses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And then I love, like, how much he resists becoming a hollow. And then he shows up, and, like, you think that, oh shit, he's hollow. And then he fucking, like, rips the mask off. I love how he's wearing it on the side of his head like yeah. a traditional Japanese mask. That was awesome. That was a little cute detail. I love that. Uh, but through merchandising and stuff, I kind of know where this whole, like, hollow thing that's going to go. Oh. Just because, you know. Yeah. You uh, know. Luckily, I do not. Yeah, luck- you don't. So, don't say anything. And, uh, after the training arc, we go back to the Soul Society. We see the prison. We see that Ruby Joe's. She has an exit. Yeah, that was that that whole thing was very interesting because we, we it's such a small glimpse of the Soul Society, you know, and yeah, they're it's just a like corner of a way bigger world. Mm-hmm. And that's when we meet Kenpachi, and Kenpachi just in that chapter alone, like I've seen photos of him here and there because he's like a fan favorite character, and he doesn't look that like threatening or whatever. But like just in this chapter. He's like one of the most like, threatening characters I've seen in a manga. He just looks like he's about to like fuck your shit up. Yeah, I, I, I just like, I love the really like traditional like Japanese style that the Soul Society Reapers have. And yeah, I like how they um they interact with each other too a lot. They goof, they're like goofing around. They're like having mm-hmm. their own fun. It's kind of like they're their own little like friend group as well like it's not all strict business and soul society it's very much a lot like normal like human it's realm. a community yeah yeah, yeah society. It, just, it feels so fleshed out and real and i really appreciate that um because it's so easy for like if this is kind of like a somewhat wacky series and then you have like this other world to like try to make that other world just like really like alienating a difference but the Soul Society, like, still kind of, it feels a little familiar. But it's still, like, so different enough from, like, everything else that we've seen so far, just from this little glimpse of it. And I wanted to add that this whole setup with Rukia is kind of reminding me of Enya's Lobby from One Piece. Yeah, I have that written yeah. down. It's 
I could see. I think Oda might have uh, took some uh, inspiration. Oh shit! Yeah, this was before Aeneas Lobby, yep. huh? This was like five, six years before. Oh wow! Yeah. But yeah, they're they're similar because you got Robin and you got Rukia, who are yeah. basically the prisoner. You have the main gang going after going after, and you have like this these like this team of like I guess yeah, basically like the government or and a know, guy with a fucked members. up face. Yeah. Interesting. Oda. Oda. Let's get Oda doing? on the podcast. Oh, you filthy kaijin! Uh, you hate my one Great, piece. Great, look now Clayton's being racist. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. Nah, I'm just kidding. But um, but yeah, no, it's it's an it, I love that kind of setup because it just creates a lot of urgency and. You, you already know that, like, when they do reunite with Rukia, it's going to be this big emotional moment, I think. Uh, I, I hope, because I really like the quote-unquote relationship between Rukia and Ichigo. And I say quote-unquote because there's this little part in this reading where, like, I Ichigo's friends are all, like, teasing, teasing her about, like, what she thinks. And she's just like, no, he's just a friend. And then the, friend zones. That, that, like, lesbian girl gets, like, really, like... Pissy or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing we didn't mention was um, Orihime and uh, Chad's quote unquote training we didn't see. That was completely off screen by yeah. the cat, Mr. Yorichi. Yeah, Yorichi. Yeah. He looked cool. I just wish we saw more of him. And then Oriyu. Was it a she? Uh, I, I thought it was a guy. Yeah, yeah, Yorichi is a she. No. Mr. Okay. And you'll see it. Wow, you already know. Wow, what's the point? What's the point? Everyone knows. <laughs> I'm gonna call I wait, what? I don't. I don't fucking know. What are you I'm talking about? I'm gonna call Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, I thought it was. <laughs> good. Anyways, um, what else did I have written down? Uh, Oryu, his training was also pretty off screen. Something with a box. So he was obviously training with someone. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he mentioned his master, so maybe he has a spirit. I, in the I just jar. assumed <laughs> it was. It was like something inside of the box that like helped him because didn't it look like he was wearing like a like a gauntlet or something? Yeah, he was. Yeah, so I, I assumed like that was that was what was in the box. Also, talking about uh, the training, um, when Kisuke revealed like his sword's name, uh, Benihime, uh, mm -hmm. the cane sword. Uh, I really want to see more of like either. Um, people revealing like their name of the swords and like their subtitle how it was like the crimson cane or whatever the hell it was but I think this is really cool or I want to see more of like the humanoid swords oh the design I, of I just want to know yeah. more about like where those like um, spirits come from I think that's like super yeah. interesting and I'm sure it's going to be like fleshed out later on I love the design oh. of Ichigo's sword, how he doesn't have a hilt or anything like yeah. that. It's just, it's just a long slab. It's just like raw pure slab. power, yeah. And, oh, and the reveal after he cuts it when he tries to cut um, Kisuke's hat. Yeah. Holy crap. That was great. What a, what a spread. What a spread. Yeah, that was wonderful. And then... Yeah, the yeah. fireworks. It was, it was like the end of the summer or whatever. I kind of I will forgot about them. Like, I some yeah, no, it it is you do need downtime after that, but like, yeah, it didn't well, really feel like it was like anything important. Really. The point. Don't care about, just don't care about yeah. Well, the point of the festival is to show that this may be the last time each goes has like any time yeah. to be with his friends. The only he thing I had written down, down for this. Uh, for this chapter was um, Ichigo's dad is cool, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, because he fucking he fucking like gives him the like that talisman, and he's oh, yeah. like, and he's like, this is this is your mom's, and then Ichigo's like, I can't keep this, and he's like, yeah, you're not gonna keep it. I like how Kisuke is, like summons everyone, just the big like blood stain like. Hey yeah, guys, come that was so funny. Yeah, I like Chad's. So he was just he was just walking by. It's like, oh, someone's got to clean that up. You yeah, know? that was wonderful. And then, and then Ichigo is like, oh, this looks like like a serial killer trope. And then yeah. Kisuke adds like, like this isn't a yeah. fucking. Yeah. What does he say again? Uh, wait. Um, I have a chapter. Calls him like up. stupid uh, or something. Uh, to those who saw this and thought it was uh, written in a murder victim's blood, a horror movie cliches. Uh, you have no sense of humor, big time. That's it. Yeah, that was so funny. I love that. I love Kisuke. I like Kisuke yeah, he's building his Nether portal. Just yeah, it really did look like an Ender portal. Yeah. 
I thought it was an ether portal. So that leads us off with the final, the final couple chap like chapter of this portal, which is basically they explained earlier that a hollow can exist in three places at once: the Soul mm-hmm. Society, the Normal World, and the and the Realm Between. This portal basically cuts through into the Realm Between into the Soul Society, and that's where we're leaving off of our gang jumping into the Nether portal, <laughs> going into the Nether to get some uh get some Nether. I mean, I mean- <laughs> they had their Minecraft training montage. They got their ar- uh, iron armor and oh my diamond God. swords. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 got a diamond sword. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I would love to see an edit of like that portal to the Soul Society, but with the corners missing. <laughs> <laughs> I might get started yeah, on that. Like, ASAP. Right, with, don't, don't forget like the purple like uh, portal in like like it all. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I might. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I guess that's Bleach. I, I'm it's just good. I'm, I, I'm so stoked to see what's going to happen next. So, like, I hear the Soul Society arc is considered one of the greatest arcs in sh- Weekly yep. Shonen Jump history. That's what I hear. This too. arc is going to go until chapter 182, which I believe oh, I shit. guess we'll we'll read. About the I read think we should probably split that in, in in half. I feel like I, I think that's well, way we two too weeks. much. We got two weeks. That's way too much for to discuss in one episode, don't you think? Depends. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Yeah. 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 Just keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. But yeah, like, uh, I have huge expectations for this. But at the same time, it's like bittersweet because you know I hear how much the quality dips after this. But yeah. yeah. If it does, I don't know. It could be plug filter. Yeah, I mean, I hope, a hopefully. friend of ours uh, recently finished the arc. After Soul Society, the Aaron car, and he said, "Yeah, it's good. It's plug filter." <laughs> so maybe. Okay. You know, you're, I know you're listening. <laughs> I mean, know you're listening. <laughs> I know you're telling uh, all the all the all the commenters to shut up. <laughs> you're doing a good job. Thank you yeah. for that. Thank you. So, so what was next on the list? Oh, next on the list, I'm very glad you asked, we should talk about Shonen Jump actually started a new one-shot from the dudes that made uh, Food Wars, aka Shongeki no Soma, which I have not uh, read or seen, so... All I know is the ending sucks. Yeah, and so the the one-shot is Yugen's All Ghoul Classroom. And the way that I kind of like pitched it to to these fellows here is is it's like Mitama Security Spirit Busters meets GTO. Now Arda, after finishing that, do you agree? Yeah, I do. Well, good. That's the end of the discussion. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's <it. Yeah. laughs> Just... I, I think the I think good it talk, has guys. this has serious yeah, potential. Season. This has some serious potential. It does, and but I'm I'm also a, afraid because. I, I thought some of the stuff that's like brought up in this was really compelling just like when when uh, Yugen is talking about like why people get possessed I thought that was like super interesting how like the demons kind of like prey on people that are feeling like mentally or like weak but then uh, and, and yeah and pressured and then he's like well that's you know super common for uh, Japanese youth which I thought was. And we like, mentioned, I think we mentioned in the last episode that a horror series would be really good for Shonen Jump. Yep. yep. And this could is. be it. This could be it. But now but. the creator um, has said in his like a uh, little weekly thing to do, where they're like, oh yeah, his little mm-hmm. alert that he does have a series uh, coming up in Shonen Jump. Now we don't know if it is this one or not. I do hope it's this. I one. hope it's this one. My I only really issue enjoy this. is right now we do have a lot of series. About yeah, that's stuff the going thing. On. But I I agree. But that being said, it's like, okay, well, Demon Slayer just ended. Um, unfortunately, Mitama might be ending. Um, yeah, this could easily pick up where Mitama... If it does, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think Mitama's gonna end. Um, also, this uh, kind of gave me like, reminders of like, Blue Exorcist, but like the thing is, Blue Exorcist is like almost once every month. Yeah. It's a new chapter every month. This would Wait, it's still going? Blue yeah. Exorcist? Yeah. Oh, shit. Um... Like the last chapter that left off, um, I think it's hyping up a fight, uh, and I'm really excited for it because Interesting. it's. I need. I need. Uh, that's a series I really time. need to get into. Honestly, I would 100 percent reread it and do a podcast with y'all. Maybe. Yeah. We're, it's, it's one of the things that we're considering. Yeah. I think Yugen would work really well in the Spy X Family magazine because I think it would be really well with like longer chapters. 
Oh, yeah. 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 It would, yeah. Also, speaking of, I am caught up on Chainsaw Man and Spy X Family, both phenomenal series. Yes. Go yes. read them. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Have I, like, fallen in love with Spy X Family? It's easily my favorite, like, ongoing jump property at the moment. And it's, it's still so early on and has yeah. so much potential. It's the most soulful thing I've probably ever read. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> it's yeah. really good. The art's good. The action's great. All the characters and like their motivations are really well done. I think it's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of like cute moments. Anya is absolutely the most adorable character yeah. I've ever seen in a series. Um, but going back to Yugen's All Ghoul Classroom Real Fest, um, yeah, so we're introduced to... Uh, kind of like our do dragonist or whatever you pronounce that, and a groomer. No, no, no. Before that, before that, it's just the oh the oh. teacher, who looks apparently a lot like Erina from Food Wars, and her name is Mishiro Sato, and she's like at this preppy all female school, and because of that, it attracts a lot of like creeps that are just trying to get photos because apparently they're worth a lot of money. Yeah, and so then Yugen comes. And he is the um, the new like uh, psychiatric Temporary, counselor yeah. for the school, and yeah, he he's he 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 knows Feng Shui, which is great because we were just talking about Dragon's Dream in Stone Ocean, so that was fun. Um, and then yeah, he can he can do like all these fucking ridiculous things. And then he dresses completely in black, and like the first thing we see him do at the school is hit on one of the elderly custodians. Yeah, and I, I love the reason why. We'll get to that. At yeah, the yeah. Point. That at first it comes off as just like a really random gag, but then he kind of has like a reason to to act that way to like people that would kind of seem a little undesirable. But but yeah, he re- he really does remind me of Mitama, not only in terms of like kind of how horny he is and how eccentric, but even like his hair. Is kind of like reminiscent yeah, of that Mitama. Was, that was one issue I had with this, how similar he kind of is to Mitama. Yeah, I uh, mean, it is very tonally different, I think, from yeah, Mitama. Yeah, especially the art. The art is outstanding. Oh, the art's great. I love the art. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, I- I'm gonna." Yeah, he's like, "I'm gonna work at this school because I'm looking for a girl to br- groom into my bride." And then, as soon as as soon as he says that, like the uh, the girl's face, it's just like. She takes on this like Oni like face because she's just like so like disgusted. Yeah, but then he ends up like showing that he's showing his worth because then they go to investigate that one of the um, students hasn't been coming to school and the panel where we see that student in her room is like just incredible. It's so well done. The shading, the fucking contrast is just amazing. And it it's really like, is compared like compared to eerie. Food Wars, compared to like yeah. Food Wars art, which I've seen a little bit of. Food Wars has some great art. I will say that Food Wars has like excellently like detailed foods and like you know it really feels like its atmosphere. This is a like huge one eighty from Food Wars. Yeah. It really is like super grim looking when it needs to. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep keep this up and you'll end up like an old hag. What a what a Chad. Yeah, he's I was saying this last night, like Shonen Jump right now has some of the biggest Chads. <laughs> you have to be a Chad to have like a successful series in Shonen Jump. Mm-hmm. For the most part. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Naruto technically failed. I would and say then, for the most part. So then eventually the teacher, uh, she encounters like a, a page that's kind of like the source of all this that just shows like the yeah her diary it's just like how distressed she was and then this like summons like this giant like demon creature yeah reminds us like you would see like it kind of reminds me like a demon you would see like in chainsaw man kind of like the way the, yeah just the like the multiple limbs and stuff yeah but i thought one thing yeah, one thing that was interesting, though, about this is, like, how kind of, like, 
the spirit or like the body or whatever of the victim is like encased within it as 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 if it's like a womb i thought oh, that yeah, was that, like they could get really creative with that honestly. yeah it's very interesting it's it's like it kind of reminded me of like attack on titan where it's like almost like a flesh mecha yeah <laughs> that was like pretty interesting and like like kind of is like feeding off of her life force basically inside of that womb and then then we get the reintroduction of Jurgen as he just bursts through the window in this amazing two-page spread. Yeah. That was great. And, and like, seeing when he, like, powers up and gets blocked, that's really cool. I think that's a really cool power. Mm -hmm. I love how he uses the beads. He, like, like, that weird, like, girl was, like, formed out of his beads or whatever, I guess. Yeah. And, like, the claws. That was so cool. It was, no, it was, uh, it formed from his, uh, tie, which I thought was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. I love the way he like uses his rosary like a whip and like is able to ensnare the monster. Mm -hmm. That's why he dresses so badly because he doesn't believe the outside reflects yep. what the inside should. And, the and dude, this dude has some drip. This dude actually has drip. Yeah, he does. And then, yeah, it's like, it explains why he was hitting on the custodian, because he saw, like, a good spirit inside of her. Because that's what he cares about. <laughs> and then she's but, like, no, you better not have the custodian on there. And then the twist is like, this, in this girl's entire class didn't show up. Like, yeah. So the entire class is basically possessed. And then the shot of him sitting down in the chair, he's like, all right classes in session or whatever and then you see all the spirits and like all these demons and stuff I actually would not be surprised if like they just randomly decided to like say fuck it and like release the chat I would be all the way down I, I, I'm so sad that this isn't like serialized already cause I do really want to see more of this guy cause yeah he's just so like Chad and it's just like it, it's Again, like, yeah, this could be, like, at least, like, the soft horror series that Shonen Jump kind of needs right now. Like I said, the guy's got a yeah. new series planned, so it could be. It could. Hopefully. But whatever the guy has um, coming out, I absolutely am going to be, like, reading Chapter 1, and you will probably yeah. hear about it yeah. on here. Yeah, so. yeah, even if it's not this, like, if, if he can pump something like this out after food wars yeah then i'm I, I it makes me kind of interested in in checking out food wars because even if like the ending or story or whatever like kind of suck like if i could just appreciate the arts which i've heard is like the highlight of the oh, series yeah. yeah so yeah it's just it's huh oh no i was just gonna add like closing out for for Jurgen's all ghoul classroom is just like again it's another series just like Ghost Rider that just has like a lot of potential and kind of even though yeah it is like another paranormal series it does I think stand out a lot from other jump series I mean I, we're getting another series just like Ghost Rider of an adult shonen jump protagonist which I, I just I'm very happy about because you know it's always just teenagers in high school um, so. I know the series, there's another, uh, is it Jigen? Is that the old series? That, uh, this reminds me of. Basically, it was another, like, old series, basically about a hmm. teacher who would go out and fight demons with, like, um, he basically had, like, a, a demonic hand or whatever. I think it was called, like, Jigen or something. Interesting, I've not heard of it. It was, one. it's an old Weekly Shonen Jump series as well. Okay. Um, if you played, uh, J-Stars, he was in the game playable. Okay. So, yeah, reminded so. me a lot of that. But that's that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a also funny pun, all ghoul classroom, like all girl, ha ha ha. Yeah. But yeah, Shonen Jump, please, please do do what's right with this series. You know, do what's right. I I'd think like to see I'd it. love to see more of this, or just it's more of these guys in in general. More of these guys in general, I would really like to see. But yeah, next on the list is Doctor Stone. So God dang, we we, we 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 weren't going to talk about Doctor Stone originally, but. I, I woke up, waited till 9 a.m., checked out the new chapter, and just, yeah, got fucking bamboozled. I wasn't and expecting a reveal already. We we needed, I, and I told everyone, it's like, we need to talk about Dr. Stone today. 
trap. It's a trap. So, if you remember in the last episode, we were introduced to the pilots, and we were all, like, simping hardcore. Except me. I knew. I knew. Shut the hell up, Clayton. I wasn't here last episode. <laughs> and and we were just like, oh my god, Boichi, Boichi draws such great women. That man is named Stan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Stan. Like Stan. Stan. Yeah. Stanley, Stanley Snyder. Stanley Snyder. Yeah, Stanley Snyder. Possible Zack Snyder reference. Yo, and congratulations to Snyder for your. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. congratulations to Snyder cousins. for the Snyder cut of Justice League. Um, no, no Snyder haters are allowed to listen to this podcast. If you were if if you were listening to this podcast and you do not like Man of Steel or Batman v Superman, you are going to get your entire memory of listening to this podcast like just zapped away. You've been filtered. Yeah, it, your your memories will be filtered out of your little pea brain. But anyways, Doctor Stone. So honestly, like not. The, the contents of the chapter itself I thought were pretty light. It was more of like the setting up and kind of the implications that are really big and worth talking about just for a little bit. So... Before Senku. This guy is older yeah. and, s and pretty much probably smarter from what we can tell. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Oh, wait, Colin, are, are you reading Dr. Stone? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I, am. I, I oh, made okay. a joke about uh, the scientist yeah. named Kino. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Zeno. Dr. Yeah, yeah, Zeno. so his name also is Dr. Zeno, but Colin is insisting that it's pronounced Dr. Kino because he's okay, a. Okay, He's a okay. he's a. F okay, no, I just think it's better that way because fucking I know, Dr. Stone's yeah. Kino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny like word, little, like, funny word. Claw looking things on his hand. He's very threatening looking. For, like, you don't son. notice that like that this guy and the village elder from way back when they both have like big claws. Yeah, which I just think is interesting. Yeah. Hmm. It shows their Maybe grass. Sure. But I love Dr. Zeno's design. I think it's it's sick. He's got this sick drip. And I'm I'm wondering if like the main cast, you know, fuck, what what is what's it called again? The Kingdom of Science? Is that what they call themselves? Yeah. 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 So I, I'm wondering if the Kingdom of Science are like due for an upgrade in their clothing wardrobe. Cause like do, rem remember how much drip they had when they were on the boat playing poker? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, imagine if they could dress like that, like consistently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's dope. Cool. Boichi can draw suits. Boichi absolutely draws suits with some drip. Boichi can draw fucking anything. Yeah. I know. But uh, reminds me a lot of Sunken Rock, the way he draws draws his suits because that was like mob gangster based and they would always mm -hmm. be wearing like these really dripped out looks yeah and then um so like the whole thing with this chapter is yeah so they find out that there's this whole kingdom in america this castle and everything and uh jen goes in there and and he's put into a polygraph test to see if oh, he's yeah. polygraph test yeah, to see if he's lying and, you know, he's Master Ruseman, so he's like, fuck, I don't know if I should say that, like, Senku is the one that's actually like, the smart one. Dr. So Taiji. <laughs> oh, no. No, because Sukasa's, like, world famous. Oh. Um, so, remember, he's, okay, like, he's, like, a superstar, like, martial artist. So, so, so like, he was probably afraid that, like, someone would know who Sukasa was. Um, um, dude. Quick thing. Quick oh, yeah. thing. Okay. Do you think Wait, this like, is gonna end with a? Colin hasn't fucking said anything. Look, really. No. This arc is gonna like end up with Kaiju actually having to do something. Yes. 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 One hundred percent. Um, I realized. No, because I realized in the last panel. Um, if you look at Gen's hand in the fucking bucket, he's giving up a peace sign, which I have no idea. If it's like maybe that's how it, like. I don't know. Maybe that's how he copes with like lying. 
Yeah. Yeah. Cheetah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is a joke, and I'm just overanalyzing. But I think it's just like, because like oh, the one hand's like completely like blurry. You can see his toes, and then you can see his hand. I'm like, hmm. Is Bochi hinting at something? I could probably just be overanalyzing, which I probably am. Probably am. I am I so. I'm so excited to see not only Taiju try to be smart. I think what's going to be better <laughs> is Senku trying to be dumb. Oh, oh yeah. my god. <laughs> So, I, here's what I think is going to happen. I think it's going to be a fight between Taiju and the scientist, and Senku's going to have to try to figure out a way to feed Taiju information yeah. while trying to act we'll like a huge... It's kind of oh, like I a... said it! I said it! Oh, 59 minutes. 59 <laughs> did minutes. Did you say it again? <laughs> you did good. I didn't mean to! Okay. But, uh... 59 minutes. Okay, um, On during this dog. past week, I've been, like, watching a lot of Detective Conan. It's like a, uh... Like a big, uh, like part of my childhood, and I've just been going back to it, whatever, whatever. And that's kind of what they do in Detective Conan, where Conan has to like act like a like a six year old kid because he's a six year old kid, but he has to like feed information to uh, Kogoro and just like you just try to give him hints on how to like solve the case without uh, being suspicious. I can imagine it being like that, where like you need to. It's good. But no, like, like Conan's like in yeah, the corner. Yeah, I took a little like, bit, it's good. <laughs> Conan's Conan in the corner like, Wow, mystery, you, you must be really perceptive if you knew that the if you knew that the victim was dead before you even touched him. And, and then the and then Kogor was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh I don't think any time has passed. I think they. I think it's like The Simpsons. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. There is plot progression. It's just what do you call it? It's just slow and also. Uh, again, it's like The Simpsons, where like like the world is like up to date, but um, as far as everything goes, like you don't you don't see them age and whatever. Well, in a way, because it's about taking down uh, Organization Black or whatever. Yeah. It's like basically anonymous. It's basically like equivalent to anonymous. Yeah. They're basically trying to like and, uh, take what do you down call something it? that big. There always is like a sense of progression. Like there is times when like he goes back to being um, an adult and he like comes back. But yeah. Anyways, what's after Doctor Stone? Beast. Beast. Let's say this. Of who? Yeah. Just so much. Just, just Listen, just one piece, no, one dream, one wish, and that's for one piece to go back on weekly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I wanted to. I, I was... The only thing we want is... We just... <laughs> and it's um and like the schedule is like the opposite of like the jump plus schedule, so we can't even talk about it in our like Shonen Jump episodes. Oh no! Jump saw what we're doing. <laughs> or Sanji fans <laughs> win again. Or kid fan. No kid. No no kid was good for kid. Yeah. I struggle. Exist. Kid won. Kid won this chapter, though. No, Kid didn't win. He was no, seething the, the entire no, chapter. One shot. Yeah, he was seething and he one shot Apu. Well, well, I mean, we'll see he, next well, two he weeks. Splatted him. Splatted him. Yeah. But no. He's like, hey, Apu, like, hey, you're a traitor. Apu, you're a traitor. Apu's, <laughs> the, Apu's the <laughs> actual slap. coolest worst generation member, and I'm so happy he's finally doing shit. No, Kizaru. I mean, he was fighting Kizaru. But you barely see him fight. Oh, like, this is like the first time you really see like his full potential. Yeah. I mean, he does slash attacks. He bombs Luffy. It cuts Like, Scratchman up who fucks. He fucks. Actually, 
Yeah. And they're already having trouble. <laughs> and they're... <laughs> Luffy was like, yeah, we're going to do this. I'm all powered up. And then literally just gets Instantly. obliterated. Yeah. Because yeah. like, like a few hundred chapters ago, it was literally shown that Kaido bodied uh, Hawkins, Apu, and, and Kid all at once without breaking a sweat. Yeah. Didn't, um, did they say Kinemon's, uh Foxfire outfits disappear immediately if you're hit? Yeah. Uh, I think. Because... Yeah, you think Luffy's would have disappeared? No, because like uh, oh, Zoro's would have disappeared for, uh, first, because he was the one who got attacked first. I think <laughs> he's already lost. <laughs> these like yeah, these like nameless these like nameless like shiver me timbers dipshits that they have tagging along with them <laughs> haven't gotten hit, and Zoro got hit. So, there's been a debate, because you know during the Katakuri fight, Luffy was able to use hockey to see the future. A lot of people have been going, Oh, why couldn't he see Apu's attack? It's like, bruh, he's not trained. expecting that. He's not trained. He's not yeah, trained. he's not trained at all. He would, He didn't even know how Apu f uh, fought, so... Yeah. I'm happy that he's this strong. I, I wasn't even expecting Apu to even be there. I, I, I forgot he was even there. Yeah, um... <laughs> I actually like. I actually like. Didn't even remember that he was a uh, one of the fourth generation that Kaido like recruited. So he only. So Kaido now has three of the worst generations in his. Four. Well, because X Drake as well, I think. Well, because like no, it, it's Hawkins, Apu, and then Drake. But Drake's like still iffy because you know he's with the Marines. So does yeah. so, so Kaido has three of the worst three generations. Worst yeah, and and, really? and Luffy has four of the worst generations. <laughs> so does Luffy Law? No five. Zoro and Kid. Five. Oh, Zoro's one. Yeah, Zoro's Zoro the worst generation Kill somehow. Zoro and Killer. No, Law, no, and Kill yeah, and Killer, Luffy Killer, and Kid. And then you have um, the other two. You have Jewelry Bonnie, who we last saw at Reverie, I think. And now we have, have Beiji at um Urogi. Beiji at the yeah, Rogue. Oh, yeah, and Rogi Rogi hasn't done shit. I he'll get his own arc. I know he'll. He will get his own. Where is Rogi? I, I pray to God he gets his own arc. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I've seen him since Sabadi. I think he's licking his wounds after the fight with Kaido because like. Okay. Uh, Did he fight Kaido? I think yeah, he beat the shit sure. out of him. He fought. He um. Kaido like uh, came onto his uh, like little sky island and he just beat the shit out of him. Remember? <laughs> He's like, let me jump off this island. Try to kill myself. Yeah. What? what so she do an edit of um the the guy from Smiling Friends? It's just like I'm gonna kill myself and make oh, you watch. And it's just oh, yeah, it's just Kaido in front of the um in front of Kid uh, Hawk mm. Hawkins <laughs> and the wait <laughs> so. Okay, if okay, if, if uh, Kaido's been if, trying to kill himself this entire time, why doesn't he just Kaido drown himself? Drown himself? That's, that's not honorable. Right. That's not honorable. Yeah, yeah he's, he's trying to find like an honorable death. a big death. grand honorable death. That's why he like yeah. jumps off from like the sky yeah, island. <laughs> you know what I don't understand is how Blackbeard is worse generation. Okay, um, like, like um, at, at first it was just the supernovas. And then after the time skip, they turned the supernovas into the worst generation and added Blackbeard as one of them just because of they were like, wait, these guys like he kind of fits the um the like the what do you call it the prerequisites of just being this like newbie that's been really causing a scene in the past two years. Yeah, it's not it's not age it's not age that matters. It's not age that matters. It's the fact that well, no, you're right because he isn't new because he's been around since. Well, no, well, no, but it's because what do you call it? The Whitebeard's crew. Yeah, Whitebeard's. Oh yeah, Whitebeard. No, it's because he like he like started his own pirate crew recently. You know. I guess. I think yeah. it's also we can also probably chalk it up to um what happened to like Whitebeard and all that shit. Like he has two devil fruit. He basically yeah. caused a giant shit show. Also, um, he's basically responsible for Whitebeard's death. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, what do you call it? Do we know how old Jewelry Bunny actually is? Uh, yeah, she's 24. Okay, so, like, are, are you sure she's not, like, just a fucking old-ass hag, like, using her fruit to be, like, 24? I mean... Uh, don't worry I about mean, it. 
Don't worry about it. Well, it was it was on um. It was an it was a uh, SBS that Oda said that she was going to. Uh. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, One Piece is good. I I, I think that's like her actual age. Yeah. Uh, to all you people in the comments. Oh yeah, she can use it on her. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah she does all the time. She's she's infiltration. To all you people in the comments who are like, I don't want to start One Piece because people say it only gets good at chapter one thousand six hundred and four. No, it's like, always good shut at up. chapter one. Shut up. It is good at chapter one. It's if chapter one doesn't make you tear up by the end. It's good die. at chapter one, and then by the end of volume nine, when they go to Arlong Park, <laughs> that's when you're Take. in. That's when you're in. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just, and it, it's one of those series that, like, really deserves its length. Yeah. You know, Broke is saying yeah. that One Piece is too long, and Broke is saying One Piece is too long. Yeah. Yeah, and I can still see it going Dude. for, like, even ten years. It can still be going ten I'm, 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 I'm saying, like, six years. Yeah, five to six is my ideal. I think Wano's gonna go on for another year or two. We're gonna I, have, like, maybe a cha I think chapter um, about eight, so no, Sabo. Yeah, I with think, Shanks, um, Sabo, Ark. I think o I think Oda saying that One Piece is gonna take five years was him talking about the the in universe story. Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> we're only two. And, we're like yeah. two and a half. One Piece like will last. I think there might be another time skip just for training. Honestly, I think they could train with Shanks for a while. Yeah. Maybe not that long. Maybe like a yeah, six month. Like a six month. No, I want to hope that Elbaf is gonna be is gonna be Usopp's arc. Yeah, d definitely. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, I think because like Usopp kind of had an arc in Dressrosa. Um, we haven't really seen like Nico Robin or Jim Begin arc. Oh, sh they'll get Frankie's kind of just been on and off with his. Yeah, Frankie. Too. Yeah, Frankie but, needs to get his arc yeah. chopped. Frankie. They've been kind of building up with, uh, like, Chopper having an arc just with, um, just with how much, like, Caesar has fucked up the world. Yeah. He's gonna have to, like, fix all of Caesar's That's, bullshit. Yeah. And then Caesar is nowhere to be found, but we have Gangster Gastina, at least. I don't know what his deal is. I don't yeah. know who he is. And, uh, we know you're listening, friend. So, one of my friends, unironically, <laughs> Gangster Gastina. <laughs> How did he fall for that? I remember, like you told me about that, but how did he fall for that? Because he said, "Well, whenever Caesar's on screen, there's that gas sound effect, and I didn't hear it when Gangster Gas." <laughs> Yo! Oh my god! <laughs> Is Gangster Gastino the biggest MVP in the entire series? Yeah, hundred percent. He's the One Piece. Yeah. I mean, let me think about other characters. Brooke's character arc, I don't really see him getting much of a character arc until post One Piece. So, you know, once Laboon shows up again. I have a feeling Laboon's gonna show up in the final arc. Is Gangster There's Gastino no way. You know, the most actually filtering character in One Piece? Even like, <laughs> he, he filtered out fucking Big Mom, he filtered out Gang Beej, Luffy. Okay, and no. he got his heart back. <laughs> But does he does is he as big of a filter as Foxy? That's the real question. No. Okay. Fo I've been saying ever since Fo I met Foxy that Foxy is gonna one shot Black. <laughs> Dude, Foxy's actually broken. <laughs> yeah. Also, before. Oh, I was gonna say before um like we start recording, we had like a conversation about uh, him versus Kizaru. Like yeah, he'd actually be he'd actually be broken. Broken. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the idea of slowing down light. What even is like the uh? What even is like the theoretical like, like physical repercussions of slowing down light? Would Kizaru just fucking like implode on himself? <laughs> he just he he's standing there, and then the next moment, you just, it's just a pair of legs with like a bloody yeah. fucking stump. Or a foxy one shotting Kizaru. Yeah. Out of this <laughs> yeah. 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 Description as well. Foxy is the strongest One Piece character. He is! He, like, actually is. Same as Buggy. Yeah. Such a good arc. Such a fun arc. Buggy cannot be defeated. Buggy <sighs> yeah, cannot be defeated. I mean, like, there has to be a reason why the Davy back fight was introduced. Like, someone is going to... I think we've all established this is going to be, like, for sh against Shanks. And that's what's going to happen. That's going to happen. Because, like, Luffy and Shanks absolutely have to fight, but I can't imagine, like, 
an actual like to the death style fight. I think a baby back would be just hilarious. Dude. You know what? I'm gonna send that fan art right now <laughs> in the talk, uh, channel. Yeah. So I was debating with a friend. We are eventually gonna get a Kobe versus Luffy fight as well. I feel yeah. that's a fight. I can't wait yeah. to see. Well, I, okay, Kobe, Kobe's gonna one-shot Boa Hancock, and then that maybe will make Luffy actually want to fight him. Because I think uh, he's at Kobe's at captain level now. He's almost there. He's he's really close to his dream. Yeah. So I thought he was maybe like, uh, maybe it's not to get to the One Piece. Maybe it's when Kobe actually yeah. becomes an admiral. <laughs> when we'll see like plot progression. Okay, I think by also, the end of One Piece, going, when they oh. um when they like reform the government, I think um. I don't know. Okay, I think like when they reform the government, or whatever. I think uh, Garp is gonna finally like take place as the fleet admiral, just because you know it's not corrupt anymore. And I think Smoker, and I, yeah, and I think uh, <laughs> Smoker, Hell Meppo, and Kobe are gonna be the admirals. Yeah. No. Um. And Tashiki's gonna uh, get cussed again. Um. Good. And she does nothing. No. <laughs> what character? Koichi? Ako is it Akoichi? Is that how his name is pronounced? Aokiji. He might, honestly, he might, he could come back. He could come back to the, uh, the just, government. Okay. Because the only, re the only reason, he, the only reason he left was because he didn't want a Kano yeah. in charge. And then I think if anyone else is going to be left over for the previous admirals, it's the, uh, the blind guy. Um, Fujitora. He'll stay. Fujitora. He'll stay. Okay. He doesn't, as if he doesn't defect. Yeah, he doesn't care. Fujitora doesn't care about uh, okay. He's blind, just. I don't know if I just like somehow missed it, but like, where exactly did they talk about uh, Aokiji leaving and joining Blackbeard's crew? Okay, time skip. Because okay. I legit that was don't. Because I, yeah. I don't even wait, wait, remember what? like reading that in the manga, and I just remember like seeing people talk about it, and I looked it up, and I was like, oh, this is a thing that happened. But he was in Blackbeard's crew. He is in Blackbeard's crew. When did that happen? Right now, he is. Yeah. The fuck? Like I have, like the when did they mention that? I forget, but like I I remember seeing that. After it was um it was in the chapter where um the uh, five elders are talking about it. Oh, the I guess thing? they didn't show it. Like, yeah, uh, on is joined the Blackbeard Pirates. That's a big problem. Mm. Um. Oh. Okay. So uh, you know that I I feel like it'd be a bigger deal. At the end of the, so it said on the end of Dressrosa arc that was when it was confirmed that uh, oh. Aokiji joined. I just quickly googled okay. it just to make sure. Okay, yeah, I might have to go read that chapter. So again. yeah, he's gonna be fighting someone. He's gonna be fighting someone in the Straw Hats. One of my friends has a has a theory that he's actually like a plant for the for the Marine. Yeah, that's probably that's probably what it is. So it's like an extra situation. Yeah. Maybe. But at the same time, I know he doesn't. You know, trust a Kanu. So. But it just seems weird that he would join Blackbeard. Yeah, you think he joins someone like. Not, maybe not the Straw Hats, but you know. Also, I really want to see a fight between uh, Garp and uh, Dragon. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. But yeah, uh, okay, maybe we can save some of the speculation. <laughs> yeah, what's after One Piece? I'm very glad you asked. Uh oh. This is something I felt like I needed to do. I've been looking I'm forward. I've been person, looking forward to this. I'm the only <laughs> person here that is like still catching up with the promised Neverland, yeah. even though I think it's yeah. like complete shit now. I really. I'm just gonna hate like. Series. It is I'm just gonna like shut my mouth and let you <laughs> handle this one. <laughs> just gonna just gonna grab some alcohol real quick. Yeah. So, yeah. the new chapter dropped today. It is. Uh, chapter uh, 178 and it's following two chapters where big shit has happened that I will address and here it's just I told them, I was like, listen, I know none of you care about Promised Island, but I need to go on this rant in the podcast because chapter 178 of Promised Island is, without a doubt the worst chapter of manga I have ever read in my life and mind you, according to my anime list, which you should follow me on there, I have read 4,262 chapters. This is Shoo! 
So, for a little context of what's happening in the Promised Neverland right now, um, Isabella died. She fucking died. She, she, they went back to the farm. She was there, and then she's like, "Oh, never mind. I'm good." And then they kill the main villain, and then, she, but then she dies like immediately after. And then they're like, "No, wah wah." The very beginning of this chapter, uh, did, you, did you make it to that that friendly demon girl that like helps them right when they leave the farm? Nope. I read. Uh, I did. Yeah. It turns out she's really important. She has this like blood that can convert demons into um, not needing to eat humans. So she suddenly fucking shows up out of nowhere, and all the girls and all the boys are like, "Yay, hooray!" And it's like they don't address Isabella's like fresh corpse being there. <laughs> they completely forget that she died. It's never brought up in this chapter. Literally like seconds ago, she died. And so then, anyways. Uh, so what happens is you can make a promise to whatever. He said it. <laughs> yeah, they actually is a promise, but the demon, like uh, you, it needs like something in return. So before all this, Emma made a promise, and her promise was obviously, I want all the humans to go into the human world because I don't, I want the demons to live in peace because I'm stupid. Uh, so she reveals, hey guys, guess what? I made the promise. We can all go to the human world, and then they're like really what's the catch and she says there's no catch and then it shows a flashback of her with the demon and the demon is like yeah i need something in return but you know what you humans have suffered for so long you just you can just have this one it's a freebie oh my god so how many, how many more chapters is this going on for you know we don't know but hold on i'm not even done yet this is fucking stupid so far and so they're like hooray we all get to go to the human world so everyone goes to the portal and Emma's like, all right, it's time for my promise. And then they all, it shows like every, every human goes into the human world. And that includes, I don't know if any of you know, there's a part where they infiltrate another farm. And instead of letting the children like grow up normally, they just keep them as like fat, like cattle in like matrix like pods with like tubes. Ooh, that's uncomfortable. So they get fat. Those get teleported to the human world too. <laughs> and it's like why? They they literally like cannot survive outside of those pods. So, anyways, oh, and before all this happened, I don't know if you've heard, but what some people consider the second best arc in the series is Goldie Pond. Goldie well, they they killed the demon in Goldie Pond a few chapters ago. He suddenly comes back and he says. Oh yeah, it turns out I have two cores, and you know what? I decided to become a good guy. That's stupid. <laughs> yeah, this this entire series is just like talk no jutsu. Bruh. That's all I can say. Bruh. Oh my god, it, it's just like... Then, then it's like, before they teleport away, they're like, wait, what about Norman? He still has his seizures. And then they say, oh no, don't worry, we'll figure that out later. Don't worry about Bruh. it. Don't worry about it. What? And, oh my god, so anyways, yeah, the chapter ends with, and, and I'm thinking like, okay, are they act? Are, what's gonna happen? Is the human world gonna be like crazy? Are they actually gonna make it? Yeah, they make it, and they're in New York City, and they're like, they wake up and they see the Statue of Liberty, and then the chapter ends. That's... What the fuck? And I'm, I'm just like... Well, I told my friend this, that still catch your promise on and I was like, what if this is gonna lead to a sequel to this? <laughs> what the fuck did I just hear? Okay, so and, and the entire chapter, they're like, I don't know, this sounds too good to be true. So there's two outcomes. Either this is too good to be true, and there is some kind of uh, promise uh, thing that Emma needed to make. If that's the case, it was set up so shittily, like, on the nose, like, Oh, nothing could possibly go wrong, and it's still shitty. On the other hand, if it is true, actually, that there is no consequence, then that's, like, just as stupid, if not stupider. It's a fucking lose-lose situation. You know that episode of uh, Chowder, where they're building the, the Schminger bread house? It's like, uh, nothing can go wrong, and then the roof collapses on the house, and it goes, <laughs> Oh, no! Everything went wrong! Went wrong. That's probably going to be the next chapter <laughs> of Promise Neverland. Just, this, it's just like, 
Literally ever since Goldie Pond, this manga has been getting like slowly worse and worse. The fat people in pods take over the entire human world. That's <laughs> you typical American. <laughs> but but this was like this was like the climax of all of that. So and, and I just can't believe it. Like I really can't believe this is where the series is on. You know, after only reading the first arc of Promised Neverland and having like, whoa, what could happen next? And hearing this, I really don't want to keep watching or reading. But I hear it's still like. There's still really good moments, and it's just... No. <sighs> Literally ever since Goldie Pond, it's been getting like the worst of the worst. So read up to Goldie Pond, that's what you're just telling me. Maybe, but... So, so anyways, like, one other thing is like, there's this kind of uh, civil war type thing going on with the demons, where there's some demons that don't want to eat humans. So you think that the queen is going to be the villain, they kill the queen like immediately. <laughs> And then, oh, uh, before that, the twist is Norman appears to be the villain, and then Emma meets him and does talk no jutsu, and then Norman is like, well, guess I'm good now. And then it turns out he's he's been kind of plotting this civil war to happen, just because he's like, ha fuck the demon. So you know what's a good example like of a series? Of Wait, hold on, I'm not done yet. So main villain Norman, not anymore. Main villain Demon Queen, she dies. Now we get a new main villain, and it's the Peter Ratry guy, the guy that's part of like the elite Ratry family. Oh shit! Oh yeah, and then they kill him. And it's like great. It's just, there's there's literally like no fucking stakes. It's like unbelievable how much fucking meandering bullshit. It it really just, just sounds, sounds like they're making Emma in the right. That's what basically is like. Oh yeah, Emma's in the right. She's always, she's in the right. Her yeah, ideas. She's Emma's flawless. Her her ideology is perfect. It reminds me of a. Because I, I just finished Trigun. Trigun is has that exact same idea for Vash, where he's like, why don't we just protect them both? Like, I want to protect the spider, and I want to protect the butterfly. That's not how it works. And that's where Trigun's, like, interest comes in, because Vash is in the wrong, and he needs to understand that at the end. But he Vash, he can't understand. With Thomas Melvin, it's like, it, theoretically, it could happen, because, oh, there's a magical demon blood that if you drink it, you will not need to eat humans anymore. Sounds convenient. Sounds way too... This is probably shittier than that one bad fanfiction, My Immortal. Just, just from the I sounds of it. Oh, let's, uh... We should do a podcast for that. Alright, let's talk about something on a lighter note. What, what can we talk about next? Just... Oh, no. Uh, I just I needed to let that out. Jesus. Do not read *Promised well, Neverland*. Uh, I'll bring this up. We uh, all of us or most of us have at least started reading *Jujutsu Kaisen*. Uh, yeah, yeah, I read the first I've, two volumes. I've read the first ten chapters. It's it's good. It's solid. Volume <laughs> four right now. And I'm absolutely loving it. It's yeah. yeah, it's so it's so interesting because um, it was giving me like very heavy bleach vibes. Yeah, and, yeah, but it really has kind of made it, like its own thing. Which I'm very happy with that. Yeah, and artists yeah. like grinding paper or something. Oh, paper plate. <laughs> it's fine. It's like uh, it's like that one little friendly demon girl in Promised Neverland. You didn't expect it to come back, but it did. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Jujutsu solid. I um. I read up to the uh, juvenile detention arc. That arc is really cool, and we get some really good action. So, Jujutsu Kaisen, how it's like the main protagonist. Uh, he has this kind of like you know, it reminds me of Yu-Gi-Oh. How he has this kind of yeah. other personality trapped inside of him. And I just I'm mm -hmm. such a sucker for that trope. It's so cool, and yeah. I especially love. Uh, there's a part in Jujutsu Kaisen where he kind of needs to go like 100 and it causes him to like quote unquote die and then yeah. he yeah. has this kind of like internal battle between the it, it's not quote unquote like, like he actually now. like yeah. dies it's not quote unquote yeah, like actually straight right up now. dies that's the end of ju ju the juvenile part right? yeah okay I'm on that right now so I'll have to start this then I would say my main issue with Jujutsu right now is I thought the first I think the action can sometimes be a little hard to follow from what I've seen that does get rectified later on and I've seen later ar like art it looks great, but early on, that's the main issue, and I do think it sometimes has the issue of introducing a few too many characters at the same time. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Like uh, they introduce three different students in one chapter. One's a panda. One's like a guy who can only talk. I like, like those characters. 
the filling and then the other, the senior. Yeah, they're cool. It's just. Hard all time. Yeah. I'm trying to fucking quiet down, sorry. Yeah. I'll quiet down because it fucking does it louder. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, same. Same. Yeah. He's awesome. His power is fucking insane. It reminds yeah, me a lot. Is. Yeah, it reminds me so much of Green Baby from uh, Stone Ocean. Like, the idea of like the closer you get, the slower you get. Oh yeah, yeah. I love. Um, I don't remember her name, but she, the chick with the nails and the voodoo dolls. I think like yeah. Jujutsu is interesting because every character has their own power. It's, it's a lot like JoJo's yeah. stands and stuff, and that's what yeah. makes it really interesting. I do really like the um those like characters they're introduced later though like the panda or like the uh the guy that like he only speaks in like uh Fillings. like rice ball ingredients. Yeah. I also love how like part of um, Yuji's training is watching movies. <laughs> watching movies. Movie. And, and one of them is one of my favorite films, Leon the Professional. <laughs> Great, I love that. Yeah, I, I <laughs> what they made him they make him watch. They make him watch. I, I really do have a feeling this series is gonna get big. Oh yeah. Uh, and I know yeah. it's and it's still not close to ending from what I hear, the manga. Yeah. The anime, the anime, the anime trailer looks, looks really good too. So. It does. What if one of the movies they made him watch was um Freddy Got Fingered? Gina. <laughs> <laughs> but I also love like the kind of like time plot time time bomb of Yuji because it's like he's doing all of this, but he kinda knows he's gonna get executed at the end. Yeah. yeah. They're probably gonna do something to rectify that, obviously. Yeah. It's still like interesting, but that's like still kind of like a motivation thing that's going throughout all this. I, I love that. And I think the series also does a good job of like raising the stakes, because like, uh, l like Yuji has like a uh, he has like three fingers, and then he like beats the shit out of this one demon, and then like in another chapter you see these guys like talking to each other, and he's like, "How many fingers do you think I'm?" I'm worth it. And he's like, eh, around like eight or nine. It's like, holy fuck. And then that guy gets like the shit kicked out of him <laughs> by, uh, by, what's his name? What's his name? The mask guy. Oh, oh, Go Gojo? Gojo. Yeah. Oh, I love the line yeah, where it's like, the, the do you think you could defeat meant, this yeah. do you think you could defeat this guy if um this whatever the demon was, I don't remember his main demon. Do you think you could beat him like full power? And he goes, Yeah, I could beat him. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I love I love when he's fighting that one Mount Fuji demon mm, and then he's like, mm. What how did how did you not die from that? And he's like, But here's the short version. You didn't hit Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, also, that guy's um, power dude, that is guy's insane. Power is insane. Yeah, it's so cool. Like I said, it reminds me a lot of the uh, baby. I think it's more like Tusk if anything. It's more like Tusk if anything. It's more like Tusk if Powers and Finish. Yeah. I just wanted to point out that the guy that's going to be voicing him in the anime is uh, is uh, Bruno Bucciati from. <laughs> Yo! 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 Human Rider for one point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah, he's a, he's a good boy. He's also a Tokusatsu star. A lot of the... A lot of, um... Seiyus are, like, Tokusatsu stars. Uh, he's Fox from My Hero. You know yeah, I hope he does. Yeah, Fox yeah does. fuck him. Yeah. Actual... Uh, Eric... Oh, and he's Tsukasa in Doctor yeah. Stone. Based. Um, I know... You don't give a shit about Ghost of uh, Tsushima or whatever, but uh, in the Japanese, you know how they're doing like the Japanese dub track or whatever with like the really shitty lip syncing. So it's Zoro. Jin, the main character's voice it's actor, Zoro. it's Zoro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so boy. if if I play the game, I'm definitely playing it in Japanese. Yeah. Even though I don't like how like care they didn't get the lip sync right for the Japanese, they're still using like the English lip sync. Yeah. I don't know why. Oh. Uh. I don't know. See you guys Overall, on. this was a super exciting week for Shonen yeah, Jump. Yeah. Um, uh, there's other series that I would love to touch upon, but yeah, next we don't, yeah we'll do that next week. Yeah. Able yeah. to like like kind of talk about that right now, but like I just kind of want to run through the other Shonen Jump. Uh, time paradox, good, yeah. solid, very good. I haven't read anything aside from the ones we've talked about all, this week. Yeah, all time paradox was was basically setting up like these are the established rules of the universe. This. These magazines are coming from an alternate timeline in mm -hmm. the t future ten years if White Knight was still going. So that our ideas of like oh 
the idea of like he needed to like start ripping off other series, that's thrown out the window. Yeah, and it's also I love how it, a lot of it is him wrestling with the conflict of, you know, this is really bad what I'm doing. I'm ripping off someone on the work. And he tries really hard, actually, to um, make his series not get picked up by Jump. But they kind of force him into it because they're like, well, think about your, think about the people that are reading this. And the guy says a really interesting thing that, like, Shonen is very important for a lot of Japanese people. Yeah. It's not just yeah. here. For- it's really symbolic for just and, Jump uh, pressure yeah. in general. Well, like, if, if we're anything to go by, it's not just Japanese youth either. Yeah, 20 something bunch of 20, white 20 somethings on the internet. So it's a very interesting chapter. And it ends in a very in a very interesting way that I will say. Uh, Arda definitely hot on that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna like read all the chapters after we're done recording. There's only two. <laughs> no, I'm talking about like all the. All, I'll talk about all of this week's stuff. Yeah, uh, Mashal, funny. Mashal, very funny. Mashal. So, Mashal, I just started today, and I'm all caught up, and I can easily say, very funny. I highly recommend anyone who is doubting it, or, like, actually is looking for something to get into, just go for it. It's so... F- it, it's good. Uh, I was the only one who read My Hero today, I think? I don't no, know. No, I did. Oh, I did. Okay, this chapter, we... F- <laughs> I've literally been waiting, like, two <laughs> weeks for this chapter, because last chapter was bore. Like, it was alright. It was, um, mm. uh, just, you know... What the other side here is doing. Yeah. This chapter, we actually get to see, um, like, the build up. Like, we're. Yeah. The, the actually, results, I thought about of. this today, because you know how, like, there was that whole My Hero drama earlier this year with the whole Chinese thing? I doubt that they're not going mm. to wrap it up. It almost felt like this. they were setting this up to be, like, the final battle. They're not, but. Th- th- this does have a very final battle esque feeling, because, you know, like, how everyone's there and all that bullshit. Yeah. But, like,. I don't know, like the like they've the been doing some, like, very... Yeah, we're almost done with... I guess we could say we're almost done with this arc, maybe. This we're at, like, the, the end of the first year. Dude, the, if anything, this is, like, the so, end of the prologue. Like, the end of the prologue. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, because, I mean... It's there's going to be like, a... St- I have a feeling there's going to be a time skip. We're going to get all a time I'm skip, saying eventually. Is we don't have any reason to fear from Midoriya because we know it's him talking about how he becomes hero number one. Yeah, yeah. They literally said at the beginning, so it's like, I don't know. I, There's no consequence. I kind of just wish... Yeah, I just wish... I wish it wasn't like, oh, this is how I got to where I am today. I wish it was more of, like... Nar- at least oh, Naruto. I, at least Naruto's like, I want to be Hokage, not I became... This isn't the story of how I became Hokage. Yeah. Because, like... I don't know, because now we know he's going to get his goal, so it's like, why do we... I mean, we know he's going to be that, like, like, just just, just because it's Shonen. It's a Shonen Jump series, of course he's going to reach his goal. Well, yeah, obviously, but, like, still, I'm just saying, like, it's very... Unless there's, like, some big 180 twist, it's going to be like, I'm going to be the number one villain now, (laughs) or something. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Like, the only big twist I can see are, like, other classmates dying, but, like, even then, I'm... As of right now, I don't think that's really going to happen. Yeah, I don't see a classmate dying for at least another year. So, uh, what else after the My Hero? Uh, Doctor Stone, Doctor Chainsaw Stone. Man. We didn't yeah, that dude Chainsaw Man. Man was crazy. Yeah. I, I read it early. I was so excited for it that I read the unofficials early. There is a very special two-page spread in Chainsaw Man in this week's chapter that I think is just like one of the best. It is stunning. Is it the uh, the books? That, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, God, like just it. seeing, like, that power in use. I'm not going to say what it is. I was not expecting uh, it. Uh, one complaint, I don't like, think anyone was. Yeah. One complaint I'll have about Chainsaw Man is the, um, I don't know, just, like, the, the backgrounds have been, like, extremely lacking lately. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess. It's, it's, like, literally just, like, either black or, like, gray. That worked in hell. That worked in hell, definitely. in hell, but... I mean, as of right, like they're on the roof right now. I think. No, they're next. They're uh, like so on the street because they were at a uh, gas station. I thought they were on the. I thought they were on the roof. No, they got launched um, off the roof. That's what happened. Oh. Yeah. My bad. But um, this chapter, I want to say it, but Arda, I need you to close your little ear holes for a second. I don't care. It's fine. Oh, so basically, it's confirmed that the Halloween, you know, the Halloween or whatever. I have a feeling that could easily become its own arc of like that spreading to people. But I don't know if that's gonna 
be. Well, because we, they've been kind of teasing it, the, the, the extent of the Halloween powers. Because, like, the guy in the car, when she says it, you know, Halloween, and then he says it, and then... But I'm wondering if, um... To me, it sounded like, in this chapter, that she's able to kind of control the magnitude of it. Maybe. It's... at the see next chapter. This could become its own arc, like a plague or something. That would be awesome. I did love when she tries to do it on, on Makima, and she just completely, like, refutes it. She's like, oh, look, of course it's coming. Jesus. Um, and I think the final line of the chapter was just, like, really great. Like, I don't want to see a thing. <laughs> like, God, that was fucking hard. God. Shit, it's getting uh. insane. I Honestly, is this the end? I guess we're at the end of, this, the end of that arc, I guess. I, so that means we're getting the trip within the next week or two of them going to was Okinawa or something? Because th that's when Santa Claus is coming to town. No, Santa was part of the dolls. Devil, right? Well, no, they, I'm, I'm pretty sure they also ha ha they hinted more of s more uh, yeah, inclusion. Yeah, more assassins Santa. are coming, obviously. That's the thing. But, like, I think we might get a little break after this arc of them going on the trip or whatever. Or we'll learn about more about Makima. That's what's coming next. Because she's still, like, the biggest piece of the puzzle. I can't even figure out. So. And then, uh, and for everything else, I mean, Guardian of the Wish kind of boring. It's just exactly what I expected to happen, so I'm going to say that. Um, uh, Mission Yosakura Family is, like, it's interesting. It's building up to, like, actually a major plot thread. So, but it, it didn't really give enough this chapter to really talk about in depth. It's just, it's literally just setting it up. So I need to see where that goes. It's a cute series. I do like it. There's a very cute moment between the, the couple of the main characters where they're in disguise as like an elderly couple and he just says some cheesy thing to her about how like like oh I hope that uh, I die first so that um, like if we're old I will die first so that I wouldn't have to like live without you or something like that. Mm -hmm. She's like oh that's cute and then he's like no no it was cheesy you forget I said that. It's, a cute little moment. it's just kind of refreshing to have a series or a shonen series of like with a married couple as a protagonist. Yeah. Mm. Uh, anything on Morik? Yeah, Mitama. I don't want to talk about Mitama right now because it's it. We're I, it, I'm in exactly the same place as I was last week with it. Where like I don't know where this is going and I'm very scared. So I just yeah. have to wait and see how it plays out. Um, Morik King's boring. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Bone collection. Oh, a bone flesh that I completely forgot about already. Um, it was just like fucking stupid, like quote unquote drama shit with like the two girls. Uh, and then Undead Unluck, great. A Gravity? A Gravity was alright. I mean, I was happy that it, it, it included it with the Chris jokes. Um, but it, it was just like a light humor about comic, like not really much to say. But it was, it was better, I thought, than the previous. I'll go ahead and uh, fill in a little bit. My friend told me a little bit about Haikyuu and like where they're at. Again, none of us are reading it. Basically, I guess in the story right now, they're like they're out of they're out of the high school. They've graduated. It's been a, like a time skip. Basically, our two main rivals are in separate teams in America right now, facing off for like in the finals. So that's where they're at right now. But there's apparently rumored uh, theorizing that there's going to be another Olympic. There's going to be an arc that's going to be at the Olympics, yeah. and that's where it's going to end. And that's apparently still going to be real soon, so. Yeah. Uh, any, uh, thing you guys watching? You'd like uh, to I, I talked to, I talked you go. I am watching Technolize right now. Ooh. And I cannot, I cannot tell you what it's about. It's good. I can't, because I don't it's know good. what it's Yeah. About. Yeah. It's, okay, so I, I'm barely started it, but it's like this guy, he's like a hobo, and then his limbs get cut off, and then this guy visits this like underground city, and then this girl can see the future. Yeah. This just sounds like Chainsaw Man in the beginning. <laughs> uh, uh, I love that the opening samples a really fantastic, super underrated movie called The Swimmer mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I highly recommend. Um, so that That's a really, it's a really good intro. It's a good intro. I, I, yeah, it is. I love it.
I I already knew before I started watching it that I needed to make it A and B with a radio head song. <laughs> and I'm thinking I'm in between a few of them. Uh, Idiotech is one. For sure, absolutely. Ooh. Another one is maybe uh, oh. everything in its right place. There's another one. And then the third, this one I'm kind of leaning on the most is uh, Street Spirit is a bit. So yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, I talked uh, about it a bit earlier, but, like, I've just been watching like, Detective Conan. It's, a uh, yeah, like I said, it's a series that I, like, kind of grew up on, and, um, I've watched just, like, random episodes here and there, out of order, but I did watch, like, like, 300 episodes as a kid, and now I'm just going back and watching everything in order as an adult, and it, it's still really special, and I still like it a lot. Uh, Ted Conan for like those of you that don't know is a ongoing series it's like longer than One Piece and it's about this genius like teenage detective called Shinichi Kudo being turned into a kid by this organization called Organization Black and now he has to live live this like secret life as Conan Adogawa and um, just help help this like bumbling fucking idiot uh, detective Kogoro Mori with his cases because he can't do it himself because he's like a six year old you know and it's just like just a lot of fun uh, it's really tense so far in the past few days I've seen 55 episodes and the first movie Jesus Christ the first movie um, uh, I watched the first two with you, and yeah. I liked it. That okay. The English opening is way better than the crappy Japanese opening. Yeah, I will say that. Yeah, yeah. the Japanese opening—they yeah. don't know how to sing. But um, yeah, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, like of course, fifty-five episodes. There's been some that are like not as good, but there's like been some really, really like incredible ones that have been really emotional. Like uh. There was one with like the wedding that was really nice. There was a uh, there's just a lot that were just really nice and like really left an impact on me. And uh, I don't know what to really say about it. It's just good. It, it, it's funny when it needs to be. And yeah, it deserves its length basically. It does. It's it, good it, enough. It's it good does. enough to write fight some length. Like just I I remember just like when I was a kid watching it, like the episodes were like on the. Uh, they were like on like the 600, 700. I remember watching some of the later episodes and like they still had it in them. Like the author and just the people in charge of making the filler episodes and whatever. Like, like even after decades of serialization, they still know how to write a compelling mystery. Uh, Colin, you got anything you watch? Um. I haven't been watching anything, but I have two series I'm about to basically watch. One, uh, finally gonna get to Yu Yu Hakusho. Yes. Um, that's been on my list for like dub. Watch it dub. So dub. Yeah. I I I, I plan on watching it dubbed, okay. and then second, I'm planning on uh, rewatching the entire uh, Loop in the Third series. Ooh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a I need one. to uh, I need to get 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 into Lupin more. As much uh, as I love I've been it. Watching. I've been watching a lot of uh, Kaguya-sama Love is War. I honestly didn't think it'd be as good as it was. It's it's basically the idea is like these there's these two very prideful students uh, on the student council, president and the vice president. They basically love each other, but they're trying to basically find a way to get the other person to confess yeah. their love to them because they're so afraid and prideful. So they're basically great. playing Death Note Death Note level mind games, trying to get them into it. And yesterday's episode yeah. was one where the main character, or the main guy, he's basically finds a shoujo love manga, and he reads it, and he's like, this makes me so sad, and I want, it makes me want to fall in love, so he tries to get the girl to read it, or whatever, and she's like, nah, I'm not really interested, and everyone else is trying to, like, get her, you gotta read it, you gotta read it, it's so sad, and then they do, and then the, show, the episode ends, but then the after credits, the entire art style for the show changes to an actual shoujo, like, <laughs> thing. <laughs> and they're like, and the main guy and like the virgin guy are basically both hitting on Kage. It's like, oh, we should all go to the aquarium together and have a nice day. <laughs> and it's really yeah. fucking funny. Um, that is phenomenal. I would highly recommend that yeah. to anyone who's looking for like just a good comedy series. And that can tug at your heartstrings. And then I watched a little bit of Gintama. Gintama is phenomenal. One of the best, easily one of the best comedy, like shonen comedies 
even with some really good emotional moments and story. Yeah. And then after that, I've been catching up on Kaiji Season 2, and that is yeah. gambling, not just like board games, card games, it, and things. It's, it's like life threatening. It's yeah, suffering. suffering. Yeah. So, the future is in our hands. It's all us. And uh, I just want to say the reason why Clayton is watching Kaguya sama is because of Mr. Goatee, who we shouted out in the last episode and actually like got in touch with us. <laughs> So Actually, keep an eye out. Just keep an eye out for uh, keep an eye out in the future. Yeah. Wink, wink. Yeah. The man himself. Um. And if I were to shill anyone on today's episode, I'm gonna shill. I got two people to shill. One, I want to shill my good uh, my good friend uh, Michael. He is a movie reviewer, and he has his own channel called The Board Cyborg. So he's been reviewing films, showing off his collection. He t- does top tens on like his favorite stuff. Really cool guy. He loves really like old school like goofy horror and stuff absolutely love this guy uh high recommendation uh, and then i would also like to shill uh, me and artist and colin's friend dante uh on uh, yeah. 16 bit rage review he rebranded he just did a video so it's on, literally just dante now yeah, he, oh it's just dante okay yeah. well he just did a video on middle market games that was really good the disappearance um, he's of middle really market passionate. Games. yeah he's really oh, passionate about the, his work he's a really cool guy work. yeah yeah, we might drag him on so, on an okay. episode if we ever like talk about Fully Cooley. Fully Cooley, yeah. That guy's so, fucking crazy. He's he's, really uh, awesome he's watched all of Fully Cooley like forty four yeah. times. He is the artist slash Fully Cooley Reddit. Have you, Eric? You have your friend make friend, Eric. Yeah, but uh, that's for who I want to show. Okay. Yeah. Um. Just real quick. Okay, I love JoJo. Being a big JoJo fan, I think I have seniority over most JoJo fans just because I've had like half a decade of reading this shit. And <laughs> fan base sucks, and I know that. But there is someone out there who is like the Jesus Christ of the JoJo community, doing God's work, and he's being treated like shit for it. And I just want to say shoutouts to Hamon Beat. <laughs> on on YouTube and especially on Twitter because his videos are great. He like clears up misconceptions. He's he's like the most knowledgeable JoJo man I know. But like <laughs> the real chick in the nuts is when you check out his Twitter account and you see <laughs> the comments that he has to deal with on his videos and these fucking morons that don't know how to read or like don't even know how to like look at the drawings properly. And I just, I just want to say thank you for doing a service. And on behalf of the JoJo community, I just want to say that I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> just leave it that. Just leave yeah. it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Well, well, you know what? We'll talk about the fan base when we yeah. do our JoJo episode. We will. Yeah. Come on, beat if you're if, if you're wait. if you're listening to this, uh, we would love to have you sometime. We can we can talk shit about JoJo fans, but thank you, and I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah, check us out on yeah. our My Name Listen Twitter yeah. and Twitter. Alright, yeah. and time for a... We'll have a Facebook page. And don't forget to check out Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> uh... <laughs> we don't have half yellow of those, button. <laughs> oh, oh, don't forget, actually... Steamer community, <laughs> but we do have a Discord. We do have a Discord now, and oh yeah, we should link it. We will. You're not invited to it. 
Yeah. You're not invited yeah. to the Discord. It's in the description, but you're not invited. Yeah. It's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a Patreon. <laughs> yeah. If you say I'm not making own, any money from if this. You say, so. If you say all own the server, you're at your band, and your IP address is ours. Auto band. <laughs> Yeah, once, yeah. once per and minute, and not get banned. <laughs> yeah, you get it. It's pinned. It's pinned too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, check yeah. us out, guys. It's weird. Yeah. I, it's it's been a very boring quarantine. We could uh, it's been fun. Get some uh, excitement. Yeah, it's been I, fun. Um, yeah. When else would I, I have time to fucking watch the once? Pizza? Once we're all back to our jobs, I think the day these podcasts are gonna be coming out is gonna change a little bit. Um, uh, I work like full time. I don't. I don't have every day off, so it'll be when I can record. Yeah. I know Eric. Same with Eric. The more people we'll we get on out. this, we'll the harder out. it's gonna be just matching things up. And like, yeah. especially when we when we get like different guests, whatever. Like, uh, yeah, we might. Yeah, we might. No. I'd like to be on no. every episode. I'd like to be on every episode. Yeah. yeah. Me too, but. We gotta have the mainstays. Gotta have all the main yeah. lads on every episode. Yeah. It's like, oh, did you see the new weekly Shonen shit day? It's like, no. Is that is that, the is, on it. is that the name we're going for for next week? <laughs> Maybe. Should we tell? No, we're not gonna tell. No, we can't tell him the joke. <laughs> shit day. Shit day. <laughs> oh, that is a name of a uh, magazine. Yeah. Magazine. Yeah, what's that's this? What we're what's, <laughs> what's yeah? What's this? Yeah. That's where Detective Conan is serialized in. Oh no! <laughs> we have to rebrand oh, no. again. We, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> next, week, next week we were rebrand to podcast, and it'll be this time I will. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe we can stick with this for once. Okay. Uh, yeah, this, I am signing off real quick. Yeah, uh, yeah. Here for you, and uh, go read... Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man. Yeah. yeah. Read fucking everything. Yeah. Read JoJo. Read JoJolian. Yeah. You got take time. The, take the yeah. Conan pill. You got a month left. Take the Conan yeah. pill. Take the one pill. Take it all. Take it all. Just, yeah. just overdose. Alright, well, I'm Sloppy Joe. I'm calling out. I'm horny. Yeah. Oh, that, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Oh, see y'all. Yeah, bye. 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 Goodbye, I'll miss you.